After our trip to the northeast of the country, we return to the province of Corrientes. Here we want to visit a few national parks. The first one was the small park Chaco, which is very quiet and cozy during the week. We were even allowed to take out our quad out there and explore the forest on four wheels. We really enjoyed that. On the way to the next park, we first had to cross the big river, the Rio Paraná. Here in Argentina, it is common that you have to pay a toll for such large bridges similar to that on the freeways. In return, you get a spectacular view over the river. And such a long bridge may well cost something. The next park we drove to is one of the younger parks. The approach from the north was probably not quite the usual one. At times we struggled with deep sand troughs, which reminded us of driving in a sandy desert. Despite a few sideways slides, we got to the entrance of the park without any problems. Very luxurious, this long avenue, but the park was created on the former property of a Danish couple who bequeathed everything to the state. And then the inclined viewer can once again admire Gabi's extremely elegant instruction technique. Above all, however, Peter is to be admired, who still keeps track despite of all the waving around. After three extremely homely days in Burukuya, we make our way to the Parque Nacional de Libera. There we see many animals already on the way to the camp. It is not for nothing that this is a very well-known and much visited park. The Kaipibaras are too sweet though. The Kaipibara or water pig belongs to the guinea pig family and loves to splash around in the water. You can see them everywhere, even on the side of the road. Something was moving in the bushes. We are lucky and even get to see some of the shy deer. It is wonderful that we have already been able to observe so many animals today. The Estero de Lilbera is the second largest swamp area in the world, so it is obvious that we have to drive over a long dam to the small town in the middle of the nature reserve. The bridge may look fragile, but it's stable enough for our chubby one. We drive straight to the ranger camp because we want to book a tour. The next morning we start very early. The mood on the water is super nice and we are spoiled with many birds, caimans and capybaras. The caimans usually lie around lazily. Their teeth are funny though. The plumage of this crane is beautiful.
The capybaras live in family groups. This mom has made herself comfortable with her three cubs and takes a break after eating. The youngsters, though, still seem hungry. Our guide, an experienced stranger, can tell which is the goose and which is the gander just by the color. I must correct myself. Sometimes the caimans do move. They grow up to two meters long and are quite agile. And I don't really want to get my arm between those jaws either. I find the rails too cute when they stalk around in the water with their huge feet. The time flies and it's time to turn back. But we'll take a few capybaras with us on the way home. I just can't get enough of them. They are just so cute. And as a farewell gift, we get this little guy. Our guide gave us two unforgettable hours. A heartfelt thank you.